In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Father. you for the privilege you have given unto us to come into your presence Thank you, Father. Come this Father. evening to honor you, Thank you to Jesus. adore you. We give our praise and thanks to you as we come to learn at your feet tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. For his mercies and you red forever. Amen. For his mercies and you red forever. Amen. We jump and say glory. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. For His mercy, for His mercies and your rest forever. You, Jesus. Amen. Glory and honor be to you, Lord. Honor be, to be to you, God. Jesus. Be in the highest. Amen. For your mercy. For his mercies and your red forever. Amen. Hallelujah. For his mercy. For your mercy and your red forever. Of Galilee, for he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me of my sin and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man. Oh, oh, oh. 
of your glory flood our hearts in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus mighty name Amen. once again I'm grateful to God for this second week it's wonderful God has brought us together again to look at the subject matter in times like this I'm, I'm again grateful to our vicar and the assistant priest for this great opportunity that has been given unto me to share the word of God together with the people of God. Shall we pray again? Father, thank you, Lord, for this second week. We receive again an illumination to every letter of your world in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because in the last one week, you have sent us out as mighty men. And you have assisted us to accomplish great things for you. We return all the glory to you. We are looking forward to do more exploits in times like this. We are looking forward that you will help us and equip us the more to do great exploits for you. And as we look at the engrafted world again this week, open our eyes to see wonders. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Last week, by the grace of God, we tried to give some definitions or to describe the time that we are in. We said that we are in a time that is that is variable so to say you cannot say this is the fixed time because to those of us that are in christ we're in time of great exploit the more we know him the more exploit we do for those that are outside the camp this is their own time of judgment so the time is is varied but all we know is that in times like this the glory of the lord will arise over our life Amen. we also went to look at what should we how should we react in times like this we said that this is the time for us to wake up. That was what we said last week. Let's wake up from our slumber. We said that this is the time for us to walk at our, our salvation in fear and trembling. We said that this is the time for us to enjoy the communion of the Holy Spirit. And that we should not fear, we should not be dismayed. Why? Because God is with us. This week, by the grace of God, we want to look at what should we do in times like this. And I want you to please pay attention this week. Because in times like this, there are a lot of assignments that God, or a lot of things that God is expecting from us. Number one thing in times like this, what we should do in times like this, love the Lord the more. Yes, that's what I mean. Because we are saying that in my pain, I should love him the more. That's exactly, you heard me very well. 
love the law the more. With all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might. In times like this, no matter what we are going through, no matter the challenge that we are facing, no matter how bright, no matter how good, even if you are having everything at your beck and call, love the Lord the more. Even if you are having challenges, even how a meal is going to come on your table, love the Lord the more. Remember when they came to Jesus Christ, they said, which one is the greatest of the commandment? He told them, he said, love the Lord your God with all your might. And the second is like unto thee, love your neighbor as yourself. The second thing, and we get that one in Psalm 138. We're looking at what should we do in times like this. In times of this, of this pit, in times of this snare, in times of this pain, in times of this whatever definition you want to give it. What should we do? 138 of the book of Psalm. <laughs> in times like this, David said, verse 1, I will praise thee with my whole heart. In times like this. But you know, I want to let me say this in Yoruba. I want to say this in Yoruba. I to say this in Yoruba. Tell them that in times like this, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praise unto thee. In times like this. I will sing praise before the gods. G-O-D, little gods. I will determine that whatever I'm passing through, I will praise him with my whole heart. Look at those people in cell. The Bible says that they woke up and they were singing. And then the door flung open. Praise is a summary of prayers that draws the strength of God from heaven. There is no way that you will praise God and God will not hearken unto your cry. There is no way. So in times like this, David said, I will praise thee with my whole heart. That, that, that's, that's a scripture where David said, I think it must be in Psalm 119. I'll check it against next week. David said, I will wake up in the middle of the night and give God praise. Let me just paraphrase it. He said, in the middle of the night, I will wake up and sing praises unto God. Because your praise, oh, 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 because what they want is that, Mm. Mm. But when you are praising him in times like this, you get great things done. The next thing that you need to do in times like this, Psalm 136. That's a popular psalm. Just two, two or three chapters backward. Verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 26. In times like this, we must have heart of gratitude. Act of gratitude. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercies endure it forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of God for his mercies endure it forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords for his mercies endure it forever. Verse 26. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. For his mercies and joy for us. In times like this, we must have an heart of gratitude. For that little thing that you think that could matter. Oh, matter. This is how you will know that everything about your body is important. Try want to want to clean something in your nose, and you don't have this. That is when you will know that Kai, this thing, as small as it is, is important. That's why you must not take anything for granted. Sleeping and waking. One of my friends, many years back, had an automobile accident. The, there, was, there was complete dislocation of the jaw, complete dislocation. That for him to eat beans, they have to turn it into liquid. I want that be beggary. For those of you that understand, uh, Yoruba very well. They will now pass it through tube to him. But you, you have your 36 complete. Even at 77, 
you can demolish any bone. So you must have an act of gratitude in times that, oh, we are not getting our pension. Have an act of gratitude. In times like this, you must, this is, this is not the time to say, oh, what kind of life it is? What kind of government it is? What kind of people are these? No, don't join them. Don't join them. Have an act of gratitude. Please. The next one. This is the one that I want you to please listen to. Don't forget I said that we're in a time of famine. We're in a time of scarcity. We're in a time of etimoni gontomi. I want you to please listen to this one, what we need to do in times like this. And thank God that in the last nine weeks, God has suddenly made the church to realize that there is need for us to care for ourselves. Suddenly. And everybody now began to bring so many things and distribution, like they were doing in the act of apostle. They had everything in common. But look at it. Proverbs 22. Take care of the poor in times like this. There is scarcity, but I want you to please listen to this scripture. I'm going to, we're going to look at three different scriptures to explain this. And I'm trusting that God will help us. Don't forget, we are looking at what we should do in times like this. 22, 9. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed. For he giveth of his bread to the poor. In times like this. In times like this, there, if you have a bountiful eye, in times like this, the scripture says God will bless you. If you give out of your bread, <laughs> the scripture is wonderful. He didn't say if you have so much bread and you have left over. He says out of your bread. Look at it. Let's look at it. For he giveth of his bread, of his bread to the poor. That is blessed there in times like this. Talking about taking care of the poor in times like this, let's go to Isaiah 23. Isaiah 23. Isaiah 23, in times like this, God wants us to take care of the less privileged. The people that we know that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are struggling to get things done. Verse 18 of Isaiah 20, of 23. And I want you to please listen to this one very well. And her merchandise and her heir shall be holiness to the Lord. Her merchandise and her heir shall be holiness unto the Lord. It shall not be measured, it shall not be treasured, nor laid up. <laughs> It shall not be treasured, nor laid up. In times like this, God has given you privilege to buy a bag of rice. It shall not be treasured or stored up, or locked up. Ele, ele, after our two the August, beauty I can remember. Listen to this scripture, people of God, in times like this. And her merchandise and her air shall be holiness to the Lord. Your business, your income, that which is given you shall be holiness unto the Lord in times like this. Your vocation, your profession, your life, your income shall become holiness unto the Lord in times like this. It shall not be treasured or laid up for her merchandise. <laughs> Please listen, in times like this, this is scripture, this is what we are reading. For her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently. In times like this. I know you'll be asking, so my mama, she's No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that we must have a bountiful eye to be able to release whatever you have. He says, our merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord. There are people that are dwelling before the Lord in our congregation and they don't have. It's not their fault. 
You are blessed because of them. And so he's saying that in times like this, we must let them eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. In times like this. Welfare in times like this. In times of this scarcity, in times of this whatever, especially, you know that there are some businesses that has not functioned in the last eight, nine weeks. Those of you that hand salary, thank God, from government, at the end of the month, they will credit. They will credit. But there are people that have not been able to hand anything in these nine weeks. By the virtue, especially those people that are in the invent uh, merchandise. No cake. Nobody has called them to cook for either even 100 persons. No, I should be so, no tailor is getting anybody to come and sew anything. Mm. And but God is blessing you by the virtue of your own merchandise. He's now saying that let it become holiness unto the Lord in times like this. So that those that are those that, those that dwell in, in the Lord will eat sufficiently in times like this. Deuteronomy 15. Deuteronomy 15. Don't forget we are looking at what should we do in times like this. God is blessing some of us in times like this by the virtue of revelation, by the virtue of connection. Yes, but it is not to be laid up, neither to be treasured up. It's something that you must distribute. And that's why God has blessed you at this time. So, so that at the end of the pandemic, you won't tell us, ah, God was great, hallelujah, shout hallelujah with me. Ah, at the end of the day, I made them 150 million. It's good. But look at it. He says, your merchandise shall become holiness unto the Lord. So that the people that dwell in the face of God will eat sufficiently and have durable clothing. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Deuteronomy 15. I'm going to read this one very slowly. I'm going to read from verse 7 up to 11. And I'm trusting that God will explain it to us. Oh, I know you might be saying that the Old Testament. Old Testament. Efunwani New Testament. Every word of God is sure. Every word. Everything written here is sure. Let me a little bit digress here. Do you know that tithe is not of the whole covenant? Do you know that what we call Old Covenant came through Moses? And tithe was discussed before Moses was born. So it's not a matter of Old Testament. The issue of tithe and offering is not Old Testament. It's from the beginning. From the beginning, from Genesis. Likewise, that's why we are reading this one today. This Tyronomy 15. I will read very slowly because I want you to understand that in times like this, this is the assignment that God has given unto us. If there be among you a poor man, one of thy brethren, within any of thy gates in thy land, God will permit us again to look at different gates. Any of thy gates in thy land which the Lord has given thee. Now, when God is talking about gates, we have several gates. And he's talking about professions. He's talking about our professions, our gates, which the Lord has given thee in the land. So it is grace that is working over your life if in your own gate you are making profit. It is grace. It is mercy that you are getting from God. There are people in that gate that God has sent you to to help. Listen to what the scripture says. If there be any, if there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thy hand from the poor brother, this is interesting. The word brother or called in the Old Testament. So it's not a New Testament language. This is interesting. 
It says of thy own gate. You see, he, he, he might be just sharing knowledge that will help that brother in that gate, in that profession with you in times like this, that will open his eyes in times like this. And he will be also begin to be blessed. But let's look at verse 8. But thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanted. Some might just want you to just put them through. Oh, I've gotten this time of work to do. How do I do it well, sir? They just need tutorage, mentorship in times like this. They just need guidance from you. They just want you to just, just, just help them out in times like this. But you are just wishing that, ah, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going Verse 7 and verse 8, he's talking about, let me use the word, people that have not sought that privilege. You are in a teaching profession, that is a gate. And God is helping you in that teaching profession. And there are teachers like you in that, in that place that are struggling by virtue of one challenge or the other. Move close to them. Help them out. Your knowledge. Verse 9. Beware. That there be, beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying the seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and that air be evil against thy poor brother, and thou give him not, and he cried unto the Lord against thee, and it be seen unto thee. <laughs> Very dangerous thing. Hey, again, Lord, she share, Lord, she share. That's what he's saying here. Your wicked heart. You begin now to condemn. That is not the, in times like this, in times of scarcity, in times of famine, and you have a grace of, of God over your life, and God is giving you something, learn to give it out. Let's go to verse 10. Thou shalt surely give him. Thou shalt surely give him. And thy heart shall not be grieved when thou giveth unto him. <laughs> Jehovah. When you give unto him, our heart, my heart must not be grieved. Our heart must not be grieved. Because, now listen to this one. Hey, Jehovah. Because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works. This act in times like this of sharing your knowledge, of sharing your resources, of making other people happy, of caring for the poor, he says he will bless thy work and in all that thou put thy hand to do in times like this. Verse 11. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee saying, Thou shalt open thy hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. In times like this. In times like this. In times like this. God is, God wants us at, to, to, to uh, how, how will I put it? To be open, open, open hearted. To be sensitive. To be ready to release that knowledge that you have. To be able to help that brother. Don't forget it started by saying in thy gate, in thy land. It might just be cancelling. In times like this, God wants us to take care of the poor. The other thing that God wants us to do in times like this, very wonderful. We said it last week, but hear it again in another version. Isaiah 40. What God wants us to do in times like this. We've discussed that in times like this, God, God wants us to love him the more. In times like this, God wants us to praise him the more. In times like this, God wants us to have a heart of gratitude. And in times like this, God wants us to take care of the poor brother in our gate, in our church. Isaiah 40, verse 9, in times like this. Listen to this scripture. O Zion, O 
called Zion, that bringeth good tidings. Get thee up. Get thee up into the high mountain. Hold Jerusalem. Thy bringeth good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the city of Judah, Behold your God. In times like this, proclaim the gospel. In times like this, proclaim the gospel. Listen, listen to that scripture. O Anglican Church of Messiah, that bringeth good tidings, get thee home. Don't forget that last week we were talking about awake from your slumber. Arise, awake from slumber. Get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings. Lift up thy voice. Don't keep quiet in times like this. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift up thy voice with strength. You know it's possible that your strength might be that in times like this, your home might be financial strength to lift up the voice for the people to behold their God. You might say, okay, Vika, is it possible for us to print 10,000 tracts? Your whole strength is the resources that you are giving so that we will not stop proclaiming. In times like this, yours might be, okay, can we buy hair time? Five minutes in any of the FM stations, you have the strength so that we will lift up our voice in times like this. If this is the good time to lift up our voice. He said with strength, lift it up. Tell them, tell them, tell the city, tell the city, behold your God. This is the time to proclaim the gospel in times like this. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time to proclaim the gospel. Every opportunity that we have, we must proclaim the gospel. Every opportunity that we have, we must proclaim the gospel. A sister went out yesterday, yes, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? And she was distributing tract. She got to a place where they were, they were playing, I think they were playing snookers or something. Can you imagine that they were making jest of her? They are asking her, which Christ? Where is he living? What is in your hand? And they were just putting cigarette smoke on her. That should not deter you. In times like this, proclaim the gospel. Get out of your comfort zone. Take a walk in the evening. That's your street. Go to the mall. Stay in front of the supermarket. Get the tract. Proclaim the gospel in times like this. Give it out to people. In times like this, people are dying. You are just seeing them in their beautiful cars. They are having challenges. He says, lift up your voice with strength. With strength in times like this. In times like this, intercede more. Philippians 4, 6. What should we do? We're talking about what should we do in times like this. Intercede more. Intercede more. Intercede more in times like this. I've had testimony of people that God has, 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 has assisted them in times like this in their prayer altar because of the lockdown. You see them praying at 12. You see them praying at 4. You see them giving, praying hourly in times like this. Philippians 4, 6, in times like this. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. In times like this, intercede more. Stand in the gap. Stop watching all those films in times like this. Spend the time to pray the more. Intercede for the work of God in the church. Intercede for nations. Intercede for, for, for men of God. Intercede for the people that are fighting the battle out there. In times like this, God wants you to pray. Colossians 4.2. In times like this, continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. In times like this. In times like this. God wants us to pray the more. And finally... On what God wants us to do in times like this. Lamentation. Chapter 3. In times like this. What God wants us to do. Jeremiah. Said it in lamentation. Lamentation. But it was Jeremiah that said it. Jeremiah said in, in lamentation. Chapter 3 verse 21. I love it. 
These I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. Have hope in times like this. Have hope. Hope in the living God in times like this. It's very, very important because the hope that we have in times like this will make us to believe that our God can do great and wonderful things. But looking again today, what should we expect in times like this? What should we expect in times like this? Let me summarize it. And I want you to please listen to, my, to, to the summary very well. To some of you say, why are you saying that? But listen. What should we expect in times like this? We should expect divine visitation. The bad, the worst, the good, the best. In times like this. Yes. Pharaoh and his army. It was a divine visitation. In times like this. This is a time that God will bring judgment unto the enemies of the gospel and enemy of our, of our land. This is the time that God will show light in your Goshen. That's why I said in times like this, expect the supernatural. Expect God moving in in full force. Expect God stretching forth his hand in times like this to stop the adversary, to prove to them that he's the one that is ruling over the affairs of men. Expect him. That's why I said the bad, the worst, the good, the best in times like this. In times like this, judgment will come upon the evildoers, the people that, 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 has, that has corrupted the ordinances, the people that are enjoying themselves in the iniquity. Anything can happen anytime. Do you still know that if, look at the, the, the shaking that occurred in the 80, uh, um, 80 island, the land, um, the land tremor and the earthquake that happened. How many of you believe that it can happen again? That is God judging in so many ways. So in times like this, let us be expectant of divine visitation in the situations of our lives, in times like this. In times like this, your five loaves and two fish can feed a thousand. In times like this, in times like this, divine visitation, it's, it's, in fact, remember, he says that he's the one that makes a way where there is no way. In times like this, you begin to see streams in the desert. In times like this, you begin to see mountains clap their hands. Let's look at some scriptures because we are doing Bible study, so we must, let's look at some scriptures and see in times like the divine visitation. Let's look at Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Job is just before Psalms. Job chapter 5. I begin to read from verse 20. We are talking about what should we really expect in times like this. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. That, that's what you should expect from God in times like this. That's why I said divine visitation. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. In war, from the power of the sword. In times like this. He will redeem thee from the power of his sword, you begin to wonder, how did I escape? It's God at work. Because he said, at war, in war, he will redeem thee from the power of his sword. 21, thou shalt be eat from the scorch of the tongue. Hey, if you understand what they call the scorch of the tongue, it's, it's a serious thing. But God is saying that Allah again times like this. That's what it means. When he saw where he be in time, he will heed you. When he get a song by, and in times like this, neither shall neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. In times like this, at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Amen. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beast of the house. That's, in time, that's why I said, in times like this, expect divine visitation. In times like this. In times of this scarcity, in times of this famine, in times of all this, in times of the judgment of God, divine visitation. In times like this, he will anoint your hand and you begin to see yourself pray for the sick and they will get recovered. In times like this, you've, you begin to see yourself explaining the scripture and you see people and godly sorrow 
coming upon there, you, you begin to wonder, what did I say? It's God at work in times like this. Because every moment can't now. That there shall be divine visitation. In times like this, God will reverse the irreversible. <clears throat> you will just see that thing that you think that is not possible be made possible. You see God making a reconciliation. You see God bringing them to say we are sorry. Just expect his hand in times like this. Psalm 33. In times like this, what should we expect? We should expect divine visitation. We should expect the judgment of God upon the evil doers. We should see God in times like this save sinners. We will see God in times like this heal the sick. In times like this, we will see God crown us with loving kindness and tender mercy. In times like this, we will see God redeem our soul from destruction. In times like this, we will see God meeting all our necessity. In times like this. In fact, this is the good time that God wants to work them more for us. Psalm 33, verse 19. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. In time of famine, God will keep you alive. He will keep you alive. Be expectant. In time of scarcity, he will keep you alive. Psalm 37, verse 19. Thou shalt not be ashamed in the evil time. And in days of famine, thou shalt be satisfied. In times like this, the evil time, wickedness, you will not be afraid of them. Because no arrow of the enemy will hit you. A thousand might fall by your left, by your right, 10,000 by your left, whatever, but he will keep you safe in times like this. Look at it. Psalm 37, verse 19. He says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the evil time that we are in, you will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. Amen. He will keep you. But mind you, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Don't slumber. Don't sleep. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Divine visitation in times like this. Psalm 57. In times like this. Psalm 57. Let's look at verse 3 in times like this. Hallelujah. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. He will send from heaven. In other words, help will come. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth in times like this. Psalm 57 verse 3. He shall send from heaven. Let's look at verse 2. No, let's start from verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me. For my soul trusted in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. Until these calamities be overpassed. <laughs> look at it again. He was crying. And he was saying that I will not leave you. I will stay. In the shadow of thy wings I will abide. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. And then look at verse 3. He will send from heaven. He will send from heaven. He will send from heaven into your affairs, into your home, into our church, Anglican Church of Messiah. He will send from heaven and save us from the reproach of him that will swallow us up. God shall send forth his mercy. And his truth. In times like this, expect his mercy and his truth. He will send from heaven. In times like this. That's why we said that in times like this, don't cease to pray. Intercede and pray more. That's why he said that be merciful unto me. Be merciful unto me. He was crying. He was interceding. He was in the place of prayer. He did not pack up his prayer altar. And then he will send from heaven. In times like this. Finally for today. I want us to look at the truth to know in times like this. The truth that we should know in times like this. Note that his word, his testimony, his precept cannot and does not change in times like this. That's the truth that you must know. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. 
Psalm 119, I'll read verse 50. Permit me to read verse 50, and then I'll go back to 28. I'll read 50 first, and then we'll go back to 28. The truth to know in times like this. Listen. Psalm 119, verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word has quickened me. Let's paraphrase it. This is my comfort in the time that I am. In the time like this. For thy word has quickened me. That's the truth that you must know. His word does not fail. His word will quicken us in times, in this time of affliction. Even in this time of success. Even if you are not having any affliction. What you need is that his word must quicken you. Verse 28. My soul, my soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. My soul melted for heaviness. In other words, there is worry, there is challenge, there is this, there is heaviness of heart. How will I cope? How will I do this? He now said, Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Because his word, his testimony, his precept cannot and does not change. If he has done it before, he will do it again. As we close this week, I want you to take time to talk to God. I don't know where you are seated. But wherever you are, you know we say that this is the time to love God more. This is the time to praise him more. This is the time to show heart of gratitude more. This is the time to take care of the poor. This is the time to proclaim his gospel. This is the time to have more hope in him. This is the time to intercede more. And this is the time to expect divine visitation. I want you to talk to God, especially on this issue of what should I do in times like this. I don't know what you've done. I don't know what you are doing. But at least you heard that these are the things that God wants us to do in times like this. Can we go ahead and discuss with God? Let's discuss our life with God. That in times like this, Lord, give me grace to praise you more. In times like this, Lord... I don't want my heart to be divided. I don't, want to, I don't want to share my love with two masters. I don't want to share my love with two masters. Lord, help me in times like this. Help me. I want total allegiance to you. Create in me an act of gratitude. Open my eyes to take care of the poor brethren. I have come to realize that my, my, my merchandise must be holiness unto you. And this merchandise is for the people that dwell, in, that dwell in, on the face of God, for them to eat abundantly. Open my eyes in this area. Open my eyes, O oh God. It says that I must have a bountiful eye. Lord, open my eyes. I want to proclaim the gospel. Wake me up from my slumber. Take away timidity out of my life. Let me shout with my strength the gospel. Give me strategy to pass this gospel across to people in times like this. In times like this. Help me to pray the more, Lord. Help me to pray the more in times like this. Help me to pray the more. Help me to pray the more in times like this. I want to intercede more. I want to be able to stand in the gap. I want to be able to be counted upon. Lord, make me an intercessor in times like this, oh God. Wake me up to pray. Wake me up to, to praise in times like this. In times like this, I want to be active for you. Lord, in times like this. Let's pray that there will be divine visitation in times like this. There will be divine visitation in times like this. There will be divine visitation upon the church. Every member of our church, Anglican Church of Messiah, we experience divine visitation of God in times like this. In times like this. In times like this. 
wondrous things shall come into our lives. We are expecting wondrous things over our children and grandchildren in times like this. In times like this. In times like this. In times like this, like this O oh God. In times like this, wondrous things. In times like this, divine visitation. We will laugh at famine in times like this. You will hide us from the scorch of tongues in times like this. Your grace will be more available for us in times like this. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want us to pray for the family of the men of God that God has given to us in this church this week. The vicar, the assistants, and every other person, the people working in the admin. I want us to pray for them. In times like this, that Jehovah God will manifest himself in their assignment, in their ministry. Let's pray for them. That God of heaven will manifest himself in times like this. That the glory of the Lord will arise over their ministry in times like this. That in times like this, they will stand to minister and the grace of God will fall upon the congregation. That in times like this, the hand of God will be heavy over their life. And that God will hide them from the scorch of tongues in times like this. In times like this, they will not beg for bread. In times like this, they will not be afflicted. In times like this, the glory of the Lord will be over their lives. They will not be weak in the name of the Lord. Let's pray for the family. Let's pray for their spouses. Let's pray for children. Let's ask that the Lord will uphold them. That the God that they serve is a mighty God. That his, 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 his might will be made available in their ministry. In the name of the Lord of hosts. Let's pray for them. In the name of the Lord of hosts. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I want us to pray. Lord, lead me to a soul to mentor. Lead me to a poor brother, in quote. In quote. I'm not talking about poor in Iran, Kobo, but lead me to a poor brother that we will sharpen ourselves together, that I will encourage. Lead me. Lead me, Lord. Lead me. That iron sharpened iron, so does the man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Lead me, O oh God. Lead me. Lead me. Lead me to who I will be a blessing to. Lead me to who I will be a blessing to. In this month of June, Lord, lead me to a person that I will be a blessing to in this church. Lead me. Lead me that I will encourage the person. That I will pass knowledge into the person. That I will show the person the secret of success that God is using to bless me in this gate. Lord, lead me. Lead me. Lead me to pass out good counsel in this month of June. Cause me to have a bountiful eye in this month of June. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you that in times like this, you have caused us to see what we need to do. You have also made us to see what we should expect in times like this. And you have also caused us to know the truth in times like this. The truth is that your world does not change. The truth is that your precept and your testimony cannot change. Thank you, Lord, because there shall be divine visitation over our life in this month of June in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have specifically asked that you will bless the household of faith, the people that, that are laboring over us, the people, our shepherd, the people that you have sent to us to, to, to be our prophet, to be our priest, to be our pastor. We are saying, Lord, that your might will be available in their ministry in the name of Jesus. We we'll pray, Lord, that you will keep them in peace. You will hide them from the scorch of the tongue in the name of Jesus. We we'll pray, Lord, that their children will be joy and delight unto them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. 
We look forward to the third week in June. Help us again to understand your scriptures the more. We are grateful for what you've done for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. us indeed. Thank you, King of Glory, for your servant whom you have used to bless us thus far. Lord, we pray that you bless him in return in the mighty name of Jesus. We request for him more revelation as you continue to lead us in this thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, you have used him to encourage us. We pray, encourage him and encourage his family and ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, he has blessed us indeed, we pray. Father, beyond his expectation, we pray that you reach out and bless him in return in the mighty name of Jesus. He came to us to lead with revelation and with testimonies. Father, by the time he shall be coming again, Father, he will come with fresh testimonies to the glory of your name in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for your children, those who you have been using to put this program together. Our technical prayer, Father, we pray, bless them in return in the mighty name of Jesus. Enlarge their coast in the mighty name of Jesus. Because they have come to render services unto you. Mighty God, we pray, Lord, bless them in return in the mighty name of Jesus. So that for what they are doing, you will grant them fresh testimonies. Father, we worship you. Blessed be your holy name, O God. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.